How are you doing? This is Thomas with Autogefühl and the all new Mercedes C Class in spectral blue as the sedan. My favorite color, we also call it Thomas Blue here. Vertical fins in this new front grille, horizontally drawn, it looks sportier on the road. LED is standard now, an option you can get the so called digital light. This then can also project some things on the road when you look at it from the driver's perspective. So definitely already in this avant-garde trim, a sporty look, but we also have an AMG line for you. And here we are, AMG line, now with this tiny star front grille. Before it was the diamond pin grille. Now we have these small stars, but from the distance, they also form some kind of mesh structure. And the AMG line also sport here accentuations in the lower part. And this is the selenite gray magno paint, this matte paint always looks really spectacular. 4 meters 75 or 187 inches is the length of the all new Mercedes C-Class. That means six and a half centimeters or two and a half inches longer than before and also a little bit longer wheelbase. Let's see how that one plays out in the rear seating area. Wheels come from 17 inch to 19 inch. These are the 19 inch. But we also have this AMG styling soon again for you as comparison. The sedan follows the classic sedan line here, falling roof line, and the dropping line is here above the door handle, but a rather subtle and classic design definitely for the sedan. And crucial change for the rear, the tail lamps are split then here now with the hatch, and that makes the car appear a little wider than before. So I think it looks sleeker than before, definitely, but also when you think about Mercedes A-Class sedan, then the CLA, C-Class, S-Class, they all look somewhat alike now in the rear. Interesting technology highlight is now rear axle steering here for this mid-size segment. Two and a half degrees do the rear wheels turn in the opposite direction than the front wheels. The threshold is about 60 kilometers or 37 miles. Then they go in the parallel direction for more stability. At lower speeds, however, more agility and also a smaller turning circle. And by the way, over there, we also have the estate for you. 206 is the generation model code for the new C-Class. W206 for the sedan, S206 here for the estate model. And once again, the split tail lamp also make it appear more wide than the typical hatch design. Oh, what's here? <whistles> fake exhaust alert from the Autogefühl fake exhaust police. Pure fake, the real exhaust is underneath. And what's really cool with this estate, it's not only the gray Magno, the matte paint, but also the night package. So black frames around the windows, black caps here for the mirrors, and also these 19 inch AMG wheels, they look really fancy, right? So, I mean, an estate here, I usually prefer the sedan building style, but look at that one here with the black accentuations and the gray Magno paint. The estate looks really sexy, doesn't it? And about suspensions, you start with a normal suspension, then you have a fixed sport suspension, an optional and adaptive suspension, also changes according to the driving modes. And there's one special feature for the plug-in hybrid models. They get rear axle air suspension, but only the plug-in hybrid models, the overall air suspension, which was both front and rear axle before, is gone. The reason is hardly anyone bought it anymore. Of course, in our full driving review, then we will check out which suspension to go for now. Engines, biggest news is there will be no six cylinders anymore, even not for the AMG models. Instead, four cylinders all the way, 1.5 liter or two liter for the petrol side or two liter for the diesel side. And also electrification all the way, either mild hybrid systems for the normal ones or then also plug-in hybrid models and they will deliver electric range of about 100 kilometers or 60 miles. How is that possible? 25 kilowatt hours of the battery size. That's quite massive for this mid-size segment. The car key, just like the Mercedes S-Class, this new one, and indeed, the interior is like a small Mercedes S-Class. But does it also pass the door closing sound test? Sounds solid. Okay, <laughs> then inside of the doors here with Leather red materials, also here soft touch leather red at the inside of the doors. It's really interesting here, like a free floating inside panel for the window levers and then capacitive buttons here. You see, this is just one touch area but serves all different purposes. Mm, nah, I don't like that one that much, do you? Then the interior you can see here, this is the standard steering wheel. You will also soon see the AMG steering wheel. Matte wood, this is a cool insert here. Matte wood styling, really beautiful. 
also with a soft touch dashboard and the whole dashboard is a little bit you know more you know lower more composed and looks at me more modern and then this floating screen middle element the different screen sizes available soon more to that as for seating choices this is the animal skin option here at the moment but you also get some Artico animal free seats in different colors also in this very color and in the AMG line standard would also be some microfiber on the inside so now let's get inside test the first seat for the day here we go and yeah, everything feels a little bit more plush, a little bit more blown up, so to speak. So you don't have too much space in here. I really have to say that's the thing. But, you know, it's a really like, you know, through design and sophisticated experience, especially here with these squircle, I would call them air vents. So not round, not square, but squircle, but really high build quality. Also like, ah, nice clicking sounds. Now the AMG line interior where we can also very well see the ambient lighting here around. Beautifully done and also inside the air vents right here. That's very fancy. And I also prefer the AMG line steering wheel. It has these two horizontal fins. They are split. Once again, capacitive buttons on the steering wheel. And ah, they are just not so good to control while driving. So I think they are a step backwards. The steering wheel itself, however, delivers a great driving experience. We already know it, for example, from the Mercedes E-Class. Different seat color here and also with this quilting then, that's also possible. And you see the middle console, less use of piano lacquer, but more a structured style. This is also what I would prefer for the interior. Wow, what an interior, really impressive. But difference to the S-Class is, the S-Class is totally straight. And you say, ah, how can I look at this? Here, this screen and the whole thing here, the whole console, is turned towards the driver and also says more the c-class is more driver focused screen screen screens <laughs> on the left side you would start with 10.25 inch smaller one this is the option 12.3 inch screen centrally 9.5 inches would be the first screen more like this and then you have a you know more, more or less manual climate unit here with knobs i would prefer that this is the optional vertical 11.9 inch screen and again I would definitely trade it in immediately to have the real climate knobs because using the climate functions right here, no, I will never get used to that because it does not make sense to remove manual climate knobs. You can tell me anything you want. Manual climate knobs are always the way to go to control the climate while driving, period. Then GPS looking right here. This looks amazing. I mean, look at how responsive it is. So more CPU power, of course, more functionality. This is really, really cool. You also have automatic parking features. It's not, you know, flickering because of the different lights here at the moment. This is a 3D view then here. Yeah, we can also swipe it around. Oh, they, they really even thought of the color. And there it is. Yeah, that's the blue car. <laughs> this is really amazing. So once again, back here. Settings for the vehicle. System systems, for example. Lights. We also can change the ambient lighting right here. There we go, also with the different colors. That is always super, super fancy. And if we don't want to spend too much time in the Mercedes internal system, here on the left upper part, Apple CarPlay, really nice and wide integration as for that. And we also have the Burmester sound system in here. And this is delivering us a great sound experience. Well, there we go, yeah. Middle console looks seamless, but then you can open it like this two usb-c chargers but also inductive charging for your phone is possible and also adaptive cup holders so spacious enough then they split opening here with two more chargers digital instruments like this you can change the middle view really high resolution then map also all over the place that is a very impressive view and you can clearly see all oh, the tiny car right there <laughs> that's sweet or what about the sporty gauges? Yeah. And the head-up display is also quite adaptive. You can change what things you want to see in there. And the orientation of the cockpit, you can also see right here, this here on the driver's side, a length of six inches or about 15 centimeters. Whereas we go with seven inches or 18 centimeters on the passenger side. And that really says this part is longer. The other part on the other hand is shorter and overall lent them towards the driver. Rear seating also with super sophisticated build quality. Look at that. Here the leather red 
high grade at the inside of the doors and also this four zone AC unit. That's an option of course, but it looks really fancy. But the classic middle tunnel, of course, it's still a rear wheel driven concept option than with the all way drive. Told you there's a little bit longer wheelbase now. Does that translate into legroom in the rear? Let's find out. Here we go. Well, yeah, a little bit more than before, definitely. If the seat would be put up a little bit higher, you see the recess right here would even fit better with the knees. But overall, you get along with tall adults. This area here is quite thick, however, you know, here for, for your elbow. But overall, you have more space than in the predecessor version. Headroom here in the estate. Works with 1.86 meter or 6 foot 1. Let's switch it up with the sedan. Yeah, the sedan. Yeah, that is definitely closer. So my hairs are hitting the roof already, but not my head. So probably need to lose some hair. Yeah, I know that will come automatically quite soon, probably. And now trunk fight sedan versus estate, electric hatch and now text 1500 auto gefühl to win this Mercedes Benz bag. No, I'm just kidding. We'll take it out, but it's still a good sample. Here we go. 455 liters more than before and the normal length. It's actually quite good. It's even a little bit more than a meter and 41 inches. That's really substantial. And the width here on the inside there is a little bit less than a meter or 40 inches. But here on the front part is yeah, more like 1 meters 10 or 45 inches. Height for the sedan 20 inches or 50 centimeters. Underneath here we have some more space. And the plug-in hybrids in this generation they are still a little bit limited but not as before. Before they were kind of unusable, huge step in the trunk. Now just a little bit less of capacity, but that's it. The step is gone in the trunk. And then we can fold it here. That's actually cool. There we go. Nicely done. That's how it's supposed to be. And the total length of the trunk here in the sedan for you. Also nice. A little bit less than 190 centimeters or 73 inches. Now the estate, really cool here, this cover automatically rises together with the hatch. That's a cool comfort feature. And the strange thing is in length, it's shorter than the sedan here, just about a meter or 40 inches. So, and we were like, you know, here with the sedan. So that's interesting. However, still, of course, better to use because you now the width here is almost the same in there. And then also here a little bit more than a meter or 40 inches. But of course the height here, this is the central thing. The total height here, 27 inches or 70 centimeters. That's of course the, the thing. And then we can also have this folding function. And then the estate can also have the, yeah, almost the two meters or about 80 inches. Really cool. Jonas, I have the money. Let's get out of here. Oh, but before I get out of here, child safety test. Okay, child safety test proof. And now let's get out of here. And now a driving part here with the plug-in hybrid and we have Matthias here next to us from the development. At this point here of the filming, um, at this moment, we are not allowed to drive ourselves. He's doing that for us today. So can you tell us something about the new plug-in hybrid drive and what makes it more special if you compare it to the previous one? We are more electric than ever. So the vehicle starts in the electric drive program, program in default. And um, of course, we have 90 kilometers now uh, rest uh, driving distance. Battery is 90% full and we have 90 kilometers remaining distance. And we think this is a distance which allows everyday driving uh, on electricity alone. And um, it's not only the distance with a plug-in hybrid, which is important. It's also the, the electric power. So with this vehicle, we have got 95 kilowatts electric power. And this means you can do a good driving even on a German autobahn. You have the full power up to 140 kph. So if I go um, on the gas now, you can see I've got 95 kilowatts just on electricity. Hmm. I've got a good acceleration. And now, for example, interesting, I'm approaching the vehicle in front of me. The car tells me, take off your foot. And if I take, if I do so, the vehicle starts recuperating without without uh, me um, attaching the foot on the brake. So that's the D-Auto, that's the automatic recuperation. So it rolls when we have freeway and recuperation when there's a vehicle in front of us then. Yes, a vehicle yes. in front of us or other events like mm. a, a roundabout or entering yeah. a city or s speed limit. Um, 
even even uh, curves are mm. in there. If we are faster than than uh, you could drive in that uh, curve, mm. it will reduce yeah, speed yeah. as well. And then with the shifting pedal, the steering wheel, we could also go to the manual recuperation mode. Exactly, I could yeah. do uh, go to D minus, for example. So whenever I take the foot off the gas, now it will decelerate. Oh, so okay. I can demonstrate it. I'm accelerating and it ignores the vehicle in front of me it's just i take the foot off the gas and it's uh, re re recuperating and uh, when you press the the throttle pedal all the way through does the combustion engine always hop on then even if you are in the pure electric mode yes um, i have a resistance in my uh, gas pedal that's like a, a kick down um, switch but it's in the middle of the pedal and if i press um, this pedal down the um, combustion engine will start. I can do now, and now the combustion engine is there. Oh, okay. And now, I've, uh, of course, I've got up to 230 kilowatts. Yeah. For example, if you look at the drive programs, we tidied this up, um, and now we've got uh, four drive programs, battery hold, electric, hybrid, and sports. And um, I think uh, that's easier to handle, and that's uh, more electric than, than before. For example, we have also in the, the battery hold mode, we have uh, the option to, to have this D minus, which wasn't possible before. And if you think about in general about the new C-Class, now leaving the plug-in beside, just in general about the, about the vehicle, what is the main difference? The main, the main difference um, is, of course, of course, the look, um, the interior. Uh, I think it's even more comfortable than the predecessor. Uh, nice, precise steering. Um, I think these are the main main changes. I think overall, um, just got better in all areas. Would you go for this steering wheel or the AMG one? I like both. <laughs> yeah, very diplomatic answer as always. <laughs> okay, take the AMG one. I, yeah. I can say it. I can say it. I know he thinks so too, but he, he isn't allowed to say it. <laughs> On all steering wheels, you, you have the touch pads now, so you can <laughs> also handle the, the um, whole MBUX uh, from your steering wheel. So you can go to home, go back uh, to the navigation system. Um, so you have a lot of routes to, to handle uh, the system. What about um, petrol versus diesel? Will the plug-in hybrids be available for both systems? Yes. Um, we will start with the petrol engine. So we have the C300E to start. And uh, sometime later, we will also have the diesel, the C300DE. Also, fuel cylinder diesel, similar range. We have 147 kilowatts in the diesel on the um, combustion engine, 200 kilo, uh, 150 kilowatts on the M254 petrol. And both are combined with uh, the electric motor, with, which has up to 95 kilowatts on its own. So the system power here is 230 kilowatts. And is this also something for, for all markets? So um, are C-Class customers all over the world supposed to drive the plug-in hybrids now? Do you want to really push them? Um, we, we won't have, have them in all markets. For example, the US market is not a plug-in hybrid market. Um, also, uh, some markets won't have the diesel, of course. Um, but in Europe, we, we have. Uh, I think in Europe, the, the plug-in hybrid is, is very attractive both petrol and diesel. And we have it as a 4x2, 4x4, you can get uh, the saloon, you can get the estate, so you get every combination. Yeah, really interesting now also with the ambient lighting, we can see that um, it's getting to be a little bit darker here now. And I have to say, like my first ride along driving impression is the whole car feels a little bit more sophisticated, more grown up and also a little bit more let's say a little calmer on the road. It's also something which is yeah. like, like in the S-Class. Um, it's very nice to see what a vehicle is doing. So I'm going to, to uh, the uh, um, control, cruise control now. Yeah. Um, so it's following the car in front of me. It also shows me that it's tracking on, on this vehicle. Um, I've got uh, the, the lane keeping assistant. So I can also take um, my fingers off. Of course, it wants to have the contact. But, um, but it's, it's a nice. capacitive steering wheel? Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So it will get a warning after 15 seconds and I just need to touch it. And oh, it's okay. okay. What, what I always wanted to know is um, with the plug-in hybrid models, so people are really concerned about that when you suddenly start the engine, you know, mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't it do so much stress on the engine that it affects the long-term durability or do we have to implement certain things inside the engine to protect it even further? 
or does it even have like kind of a preheating process or something? Um, it's a good question and uh, we've um, looked a lot into that. The first good news is we do not start the engine with a starter. We used a big uh, electric motor and a wet clutch in the gearbox, the so-called K0, which starts the engine. So this engine starts, um, is like a gear shift. It can be done thousands of times. That, that's not a problem at all. We, we test this um, and uh, you don't wear out a starter or something. And the second advantage is the engine doesn't like cold starts. It doesn't yes. like idling at cold temperatures. Mm. Um, but what we do here is if, it, if we run it, we run it under load. And that's good for the engine to warm up quickly. So imagine uh, you, you go, um, you do short distance trips every day, you get a cold start every morning. With the plug-in hybrid, you just get one cold start somewhere on a long distance trip, and then the engine heats up quite quickly. And um, on the other side, for example, if you go down a long, a long mountain and the engine is off, uh, the engine doesn't cool um, because we, we shut it off and if you keep the engine running, it would cool down even more. So from a thermal perspective, um, we have a lot of good options with the plug-in hybrid to, to handle that. I can show you on the other screen here. I go um, to the en energy flow and show you the boost. Um, for example, if I shut on the engine, you can see it's coming now and you see boost. Did you see the boost for, yeah, yeah. for a very short period of time? The boost helps the engine. We, we keep the engine in a good operating point and the electric motor supports with boost. So we even avoid high load, high load in the initial starting situation. So would you say from an engineering perspective that the plug-in hybrid inbuilt combustion engine is actually taking oh speed camera yes <laughs> it's actually then more durable long term than the non-plug-in hybrid yes i would say oh, because you avoid short distance trips cold starts if you run it you run it in a good operating point i think if you have a mix um, out of electric driving combustion engine driving you will never have any problem with the combustion engine interesting yeah that's an interesting conclusion for today. I hope that helps because you have asked us this question for you know a lot of times. Now we get the engineering perspective and thank you so much for the ride for today. Oh, sorry, I was just petting the car, you know, so when they have this matte paint, I sometimes like to do that. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> Let's go to our conclusion here for the all new Mercedes C-Class. I think a great sporty look in the front especially then with the AMG line. This tiny star grille is really cool. Although I really love the diamond pin grille as well. Hmm, yeah, tough thing to swallow, definitely. The gray Magno paint, as I said, is awesome. And also the night package to have this more sinister look. In the building style, of course, the sedan looks you know, more classic, sleeker, but some of you might prefer the estate. So tell me in the comments, which one of you would go for the estate and which one for the sedan. Biggest technology highlight is the rear axle steering. This will bring so much more agility to the riding overall. Definitely a cool thing to go for. It will be extra in a price, yes. Hey, but at least you save the air suspension because it's not available anymore. Unless you have the plug-in hybrid, then you get it again at the rear axle. So a little bit complicated right there, but also a base suspension for the C-Class will just do fine. Interior now with a little bit more space, especially in the rear a little bit more. However, in the front, yeah, is it too much space more? Shoulder area, yes, but then this new middle console and so on also has some kind of cramped cage in feeling. As for the big screens, that looks fancy, but I would actually advise you, if you buy one, to go with a smaller screen that you can still have a proper AC unit and you're not left with this screen AC unit on the screen. Yes, you can also use the MUX, so just say, hey Mercedes, change temperature to 23 degrees something that is possible but still easier to control it either with knobs or buttons at least than what we have there in a smaller setup but definitely also a tech upgrade and driving wise as i said especially with the rear axle steering and the plug-in hybrids also a crucial change now higher range and also the trunk is finally also usable with the p halves so Overall, I think very interesting upgrades. It's just a thing, you know, for all the AMG fans. Yeah, 
These will be very sad days for AMG fans because the six cylinder will be gone. But for everyone else, <laughs> you will have a four cylinder anyway. And then I think the new Seagas is also a very interesting choice. We will keep you updated, of course, with more content to this C-Class and also to other Mercedes vehicles and their competitors. So please subscribe if you haven't done so far. See you next time.